Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy and happy beginning of May you guys. That means another month has gone by which means that this video is my faves and fails for April 2023. So I'm going to go over the things that I loved during the month of April, the things that didn't work out so well for me during the month of April, I'll give you little mini reviews on them all here and that's what today's video is going to be. So let's start off today in skincare. I kind of feel like I discovered something over the last couple of months. Well, it really took like six months to figure this out. You know when you've been like using a product for a long time and you think you like it, but then you try something else and then you're like, oh my gosh, my skin looks so much better with this new product than with the old one. But then you're never sure because you're like, well, wait, I like the old one so much. So then you try that one again. And then the second time it like cements it and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, for sure. My skin looks way better with the new one. So let me tell you what I'm talking about here. It is my retinaldehyde serums. And you guys have seen me talk about both of these for a long, long time. So back five years ago, when I first wanted to start using retinaldehyde, there was only one retinaldehyde product on the market pretty much. And it was this Aven retinal 0.1 intensive cream and so i had been using this for a couple years and i really liked it on my neck and i always found it to be non-irritating and to help my neck to look better well over the years other retinal to high products have come on the market and i started using the may love moonlight retinal to hide serum and i love this one as well so i would kind of alternate using them first i would use this until i ran out and then when i ran out of this i would use this and the last time that i ran out of this and used this i felt like my neck didn't look as good using this as it had when i was using this so i had run out of this about a month ago i pulled the new one of this out of the cabinet and started using it and i felt like within a week or two my neck started not looking as good as it had when i was using the may love and i was like oh my gosh it's true what i kind of thought i saw the last time i switched from this to this i feel like the may love moonlight is way more effective of a serum which is actually awesome because this guy costs 70 dollars for an ounce and i was always a little bit like ouch at how much it costs but like i said it was the only game in town five years ago and this is more like a 35 dollar 35 40 dollar price point so substantially less expensive than this for an ounce and i absolutely love this so i'm gonna go ahead and use just the may love from now on and we'll see how that goes all right wanted to talk about sunscreens and antioxidants a little bit because of course it's may we're starting into going into the summer months where you're going to be more exposed to the sun and so you got to get your sunscreen and your antioxidant game going so wanted to talk about my favorite antioxidant, which is vitamin C and my favorite place to get it, which is Timeless Skincare. So Timeless makes a couple of different vitamin C serums. They make the 20% vitamin C plus E plus ferulic acid serum. And this has been my longtime love, my absolute favorite. And I use it on my face and on my chest and on the backs of my hands. But of course my neck is very sensitive. So they recently came out with a 10% vitamin C serum, and these both are L-ascorbic acid vitamin C serum. So they're the form of vitamin C that I like at best, that has the most uh, scientific research behind it, showing that it works and it's formulated correctly to actually get into your skin. But this one can be a little bit too harsh for my neck. So I was really happy when they came out with the 10%. So I've been using the 10% on my neck lately and that's working out really, really well. What antioxidants do is they protect your skin from free radicals that are caused by sun exposure and pollution and things like that. And when we're outdoors more, we have more exposure to sun definitely and pollution. And so it's really great to have them in combination with your sunscreen. So in your skincare routine, you would put these on like your first or your second step, and then you'd put on like say a moisturizer or another serum, and then you go in with your sunscreen. And so you have your sunscreen protecting your skin during the day, but then you have these antioxidants like working in the background to help to make your skin stronger and to help to mitigate the attacks from the sun. So it's really great to have an antioxidant like that in your skincare routine, especially this time of year, but definitely all year round. So love those. Timeless will usually have a Mother's Day sale, so these might be 
as much as 40% off this weekend. I'm not 100% sure on that, but if there is a sale, I will definitely mark it in the info box below the video, right next to the link. And then talking about sunscreen, just wanted to mention my two favorite sunscreens. If you're looking for a great sunscreen going into this season, my Holy Grail sunscreen currently is the Undefined r, &R sunscreen. This is a beautiful sunscreen. It's an SPF 50 with a PA++++ rating, which means that it's giving you the highest UVA protection. You definitely want the highest UVA protection if you're concerned about the sun's rays aging your skin, which they definitely do. So this is an awesome one, and this one is also 40 minutes water resistant. And if you have dry skin, this is gonna be really, really hydrating. It's just beautiful under makeup. It's the one that I wear when I test makeup, so it's an all around perfect sunscreen for me. It is tinted. And uh, the tint is right for me. Of course, the tint isn't gonna be right for everyone. I know some really, really paler people write in and say that it's a little um, orangey for their skin. So let me just show you what this looked like. I actually did a sunscreen video over the course of the month. I can link it right up top for you if you're looking for a great sunscreen going into this summer. I talked about all my favorite sunscreens, whether it's chemical or mineral, so you can find a great sunscreen by checking out that video. So anyway, here is the tint on the undefined R&R, &R, and you can see how lightweight and fluid and runny it is, and it's just so, so beautiful. It does feel like a little bit oily, a little bit, um, I wouldn't say greasy, just, very emollient and very hydrating going on. And then my other longtime favorite is the Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44. This is an awesome sunscreen, also a tinted mineral, but this one isn't a runny sunscreen. It's a little bit thicker. It's more of a standard cream and it also has a tint. This one's a little bit more on the cool side, not quite as warm. It doesn't have as much of an oil forward feeling going on as the r, &R does, but it feels really nice. It just feels like a skincare lotion. This sunscreen is also hydrating. It's also water resistant to 40 minutes. And then another sunscreen I wanted to talk about is one that I picked up in the Sephora sale. I told you guys in that video that I had it in my cart and so I got it and I've given it a try. It's the Kosas Dream Beam. This is their Comfy Smooth Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 40. And this is an all mineral tinted sunscreen as well. I'm doing my sunscreen testing right now for my sunscreen testing video that's coming up in May. Although, yee, I still have, let's see, I've got about two thirds of the sunscreens tested. I still have five or six to go. So it's gonna be a couple more weeks. I usually put that video out the first week of May. Not gonna make it this year. It's gonna be like maybe the third week of May by the time I get all these sunscreens tested. I have tried it. I think it's a really nice sunscreen to use on its own. You know, I always try the sunscreens under makeup and I gotta say it wasn't really fantastic under makeup, unfortunately, but as like a wear it on its own sunscreen, it's really nice. It feels more like the Elta MD going on. And this one is very fragranced. If you like, <laughs> a little too fragranced for me. If you like things with a real strong floral scent, you would like this. I'm pretty sure the scent is Gardenia. Gardenia or lilac, something like that. But a really strong floral fragrance. The tint hides any white cast and uh, it does have a luminous finish, but it is very, very wearable on its own. It really matched my skin tone very well, but it looks very natural. It's very glowy. It's really pretty sunscreen on the skin. All right, I tried a new retinol body lotion this month. I saw this Gold Bond Age Renew Retinol Overnight Body and Face Lotion at Target, so I thought I'd give it a try. I normally use the Versed uh, press Restart Gentle Retinol Lotion, but I thought, you know, if I could find something that was just as good for less money, I would definitely be interested in giving it a try. So pick this up, have used it a bunch of times. I really like this. I think the ingredient list is really good. It's got urea, it's got shea butter, glycerin, dimethicone. It's got some niacinamide in it. You know, what doesn't these days? Some jojoba esters, macadamia seed oil, squalane. Uh, of course, it's got the retinol, it's got vitamin E, it's got a peptide, it's got apple and watermelon fruit extract, it's got lentil extract, and it also has a ceramide in it. So it's jam-packed full of really heavy-duty moisturizing ingredients that should make a difference in your skin if you have dry skin from here down. Now this says that you can use it on your face. I don't know that I necessarily would because it is a pretty thick cream. It has a little bit more to offer than the Verst does. The Verst is a really nice lotion, especially if you like a 
lighter weight lotion that sinks in really quickly. And the price difference between these two isn't that much of a difference. This is definitely less expensive. It's like seven ounces for, depending on where you buy it, 12 to $14. This is six ounces for like 17 to $18. So this is a little bit less. This does come in a larger size with a pump dispenser, which I'm really interested in getting, but that one's a Walmart exclusive. So I'm going to have to order it from Walmart. I'll link the Walmart one down below as well, but this is a really nice retinol body lotion. All right, let's talk makeup next. The Sephora sale happened last month and I had some things in my cart that I told you guys I was gonna buy and I have bought them. I have used them each a couple of times. I'd say probably my favorite thing from the Sephora sale that I bought is another one of these Fenty lipsticks. So I have this in Goji Gang already, but I bought it in a new color. And what the heck is it? Oh, it's too tiny, I can't see it. But it's the shade I'm wearing today. It is a perfect, perfect nude. And I love these lipsticks so much because they're so creamy. It's like a cross between a lipstick and a lip balm. And so your lips never feel dry with this. I'll put the color name down below for you guys in the info box, but this is beautiful. I love it. Doesn't migrate up into my lip lines. It's a perfect nude and it's so, so creamy and so, so hydrating. So this is the shade that I'm wearing today. And this is my original shade that I have it in Goji Gang. They're both beautiful. Having only used it once or twice, I think my second favorite thing from the Sephora haul is my Basma stick foundation. Now I haven't tested it. I haven't really like kept an eye on it to see how it does all day, but I put this on and I wore it to make an Instagram video. Which one was it? Oh, it was the one about the um, Omnilux sale. And so many people were like, your skin looks fantastic. What makeup are you wearing today? You know, like what's the makeup combo? And it was this. So people really loved how it looked and I really enjoy this. It's a really nice stick foundation. It just glides on over your skin. And I gotta say, I have never enjoyed a stick foundation because they all go on so heavy because they have to have waxes to hold it together and make it into the stick form. And the waxes just, I put them on and I feel like, you know, I've escaped from the wax museum. Frankly, it just looks waxy and cakey. And this one is so lightweight and it doesn't look waxy and cakey. It has just a beautiful glow and it doesn't look like heavy makeup on your skin. So it's a beautiful foundation if you wanna give that a try. The shade I have it in is 24. I'm not sure what the name is. And I swatched it right here. It's such a perfect match for me that I don't even know if you can see that, but that's it right there. And then my one fail product that I was kind of bummed about was the Huda Beauty Matte Palette. Nothing against the palette per se. The photos of this on the Sephora website, I thought it was gonna be just a little bit more neutral, a little bit more taupey. It's very pink, it's very mauve -y. So I don't mind it, but I don't really love pink eyeshadow on me, so I'm not sure that I'm gonna use it that much. This shade down here, I thought, oh, there's the perfect matte crease color that I'm always looking for. That looks so nice and grayish and everything. When you actually apply it, it goes all pinky orangey. Does that look different to you? Or is it my imagination? Like this really looks like a cool neutral. And that looks very, very pink and almost like peachy orangey, right? I don't know. It's just when the, when the shades went on, I ended up with this really very vibrant, um, pinky, orangey, mauve eyeshadow look, which wasn't what I wanted out of the palette. It's not that it was a bad look, it's just not what I wanted out of it. If you bought this, let me know what you think of it. If you like the shades, if you don't like the shades, I'm a little like underwhelmed by it, I guess I would say. All right, that's it for the makeup. I just wanted to mention a shampoo that I used. I used it this morning. I used it over the weekend as well. A viewer wrote in and told me about this shampoo. And you know how I love my Orbe. I'm absolutely like crazy over that stuff. I did buy a new bottle of it in the Sephora sale because I do like to save the 20% because it's so ridiculously expensive. But the viewer that wrote in about this shampoo just raved about it so much. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'll give it a try. So I ordered it up and here it is. It is a bar shampoo, right? How interesting is that? I really hadn't thought of buying my shampoo in this form before, but I think this would be great for travel. I think it's great if you're trying to save the planet. Like the marketing for this says that this one little cake 
is the equivalent of three 10 ounce bottles of shampoo. So you could save three plastic bottles from going into the landfill by using this. I looked at the ingredients on this and the ingredients are very minimal, but also really, really nice. My problem with most shampoos is that they contain this thing called C14 to 16 something something, but it's the really C and the numbers that I recognize most. And that's in 90% of the shampoos that are out there. And that stuff is so drying on your hair and that's why I love the Orbe so much because it doesn't contain that. And this is just me anecdotally saying that this stuff is so drying, but I've used a lot of shampoos in my life and I've noticed that the ones that contain that, very drying, the ones that don't, aren't. So anyway, this doesn't contain it. So I took it in the shower with me. First, I like rubbed it between my hands and got a little bit of foam going and put that in my hair. Then I took the bar and just started like rubbing it right on my head. It gave a lot of nice lather. It really felt nice. My hair didn't feel dry after I rinsed it out. I didn't buy the conditioner bar. Um, I used my regular conditioner with it, but I was really impressed with it. I was like, I felt like my hair was soft. I felt like it was extra smooth, like super not frizzy. And it's been so humid and rainy here that it could have easily been very frizzy. The only thing that I don't love about it is that I think I bought the wrong fragrance. It comes in four different fragrances, I think. And I bought Hidden Waterfall. It's very, very strong, very kind of musky. They have a citrus one. I kind of wish I had bought that one instead, but I really enjoyed using this. Oh, and the price, like $18. And it's supposed to give you 30 to 60 shampoos. All right, let's talk clothes and accessories next. This shirt is one of my all-time favorite things for this spring wear this probably three or four times a week. Like this has just become my go-to thing. It's endured a lot of washing because I do wear it so often. And I love it with these little square neck tanks underneath. It's just a little, you know, square neck tank top there. And I bought this tank in three different colors. I have it in white and black, but the combination of this with this, I can wear the white one, I can wear the black one, whatever. I just love this shirt. But it's a perfect transitional piece for spring and it goes with everything. So these two are faves. I wanted to talk about this little necklace. I've been wearing it for about a month now and I really love it. It's like a little daisy. Let's see. There it is. It's a little beaded daisy. It comes in a few different colors. And the thing that I like most about it is that it's on an adjustable chain. So this chain, let me bring it around to the front here to show you. It just has this like funny little toggle thing right here. So you just grab that and that and pull. And all of a sudden you've got a shorter necklace. So you want it to be a choker. You can wear it as a choker and just slide that around to the back there. So now you've got a shorter necklace and you can like layer up your necklaces. Okay. Then I wanted to show you the jeans I'm wearing. I was looking for a pair of wide leg kind of trouser jeans. And I found this brand and this pair of jeans and I absolutely love them. They fit so well. They have a lot of stretch to them. So you can really size down on these. They're really stretchy. They really hug all your curves. They look so good. I love the slit in front. I love the wide leg, but they're not like some of the other wide leg jeans that I bought. They're just way too wide. They're like these big elephant legs. And I'm like, you know, I still want to look sleek and I want them to make me look taller. And I just love the look of these jeans. The shoes that I have on with those I showed you in last month's Faves and Fails. They're these Ugg Espadrille uh, wedges. I love these. I've just been wearing them around the house because when I go out, it's been raining. So I end up putting on like my rain boots or something to go out. Um, you know, I need socks when I go outside because it's chilly. But in the house, I've been wearing these with them and they look really cute. And then more footwear that I wanted to talk about this month are my uh, Converse sneakers. I got another pair of these. I don't know if I've talked to you about these sneakers since last fall, right? These are the sneakers that I wear all fall, all winter, all spring. I finally take them off and let my toes out in the summer. But this time of year here, like I said, weather is not great. Have to always have like a sock because my feet are freezing. And so I had been wearing the white version of these that I have. And I decided that I needed another color. So I bought myself another pair. So I got them in black and I absolutely love them. And these get so many compliments everywhere I go. People notice these sneakers and are like, oh my God, I love your sneakers. They're so cute. The best thing about them is how comfortable they are. They are the most comfortable sneakers because they have this big platform, but it's like a marshmallowy platform. Like you literally feel like you're walking on a 
you know, cloud of marshmallows. It's so comfortable. So a couple weeks ago, I had gone tulip picking at a tulip farm in Rhode Island and I posted about it on Instagram. Everyone was interested in my sunglasses and my hat. And the sunglasses are ones that I wanted to talk about again because, you know, I recommend these guys to you every year and I just love these sunnies. I wear them everywhere. They're lightweight. They don't make marks in my face. They don't dent up my nose, but they're big and they, you know, screen a big area of my face from the sun. Someone who had asked for the link for the sunglasses, I sent her the link and she wrote back and she goes, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised. I thought those were designer sunglasses. I'm like, no, $15 on Amazon. So give them a try. They're also very sturdy. I wore these all over Greece last summer and there was a time when we were on the ferry and I had put them on top of my baseball hat and then I whipped my hat off. They went flying across, <laughs> landed on the metal deck of the ferry. And uh, while the, one of the lenses did pop out, it didn't scratch, it didn't break. I popped it back in and I've still been wearing the same pair. So virtually indestructible. Then the other thing that everyone was asking about in that post was my hat, which unfortunately it's from a couple years ago from Nordstrom and they don't have it anymore. So I linked a similar hat, but when I link a similar hat, I always like to buy it to see how it is to make sure that it's okay. I really like this hat that I linked. So the hat that I wore had this little bit of weaving here and here. Uh, and I actually like this one better because the one that I wore, the contrasting weaving had holes in it. And so, you know, it was letting more sun through and everything. But I love this one. It's got like a little bow in the back, very similar to the hat that I wore. Love the look of it. And uh, so if you're looking for a hat for this spring, something to wear, this is a really good one. So I'm so happy that I got this one. It is adjustable. It does have the little string tie inside. It's slightly big for me. I don't really like to tie this because then it marks up my forehead. So I would prefer it to just be a little bit loose and just sit naturally, but I love it that it sits kind of low on my brow. So it's really gonna shade my face. And this hat offers UPF 50, so it's sun protective. It's really cool looking and you'll look great in it, whether you're doing gardening, touristing, tulip picking, wherever you wear this hat, it's a really great one. And I think it was like, under 20 bucks, maybe under 30 bucks, something like that. So a really great hat at a really great price point. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about today is something for the laundry. Now, I don't know how many of you have multiple pets like I do, but I have two dogs. I have a short haired black dog who's big and I have a long haired blonde dog who's little. And I've noticed that over the course of the winter, so much more hair trapped on everything that when I pull my clothes out of the laundry, like especially my leggings, they're just covered with dog hair. So I was like, oh gosh, I need to find a way to like get all this dog hair. Like do I have to lint roller each piece as it comes out of the dryer? So of course I went looking on Amazon for something to help with that. And I found these little guys, which are called the fur zapper. And it's two like little, you know, rubbery, discs with little paws cut out, super cute, that you put into your laundry. And because they're like rubbery and sticky, they attract the hairs. And uh, so they recommend that you put two in your wash and then two in your dryer. And so now these things are really working amazingly. They're keeping most of the dog hair off of my clothes, but look how much fur these two collected. I mean, I was pretty amazed by it and it really has made a difference in my laundry. So loving those as well. All right, you guys, that is it for today's faves and fails. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.